I'm Jim Kramer, and welcome to my world. You need to get in the game. Fools are going to go out of business, and he's nuts. They're nuts. They know nothing. I always like to say there's a bull market somewhere. And I promise Mad you money. Just you can't afford to miss it. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends. Just trying to save you some money. My job, not just to entertain, but to educate. Call me, 1-800-743-CNBC. We're not used to this. We're simply not accustomed to markets that let you in and allow you to make money practically on a daily basis. Markets that permit you to make a decent profit simply from buying companies that are doing well with decent prospects going forward. That's what I found myself thinking is, once again, we started lower the morning, looking pretty ugly, right? And then blossomed over the course of the day into a decent session. Dow rallying 33 points, S&P gaining 0.2%, NASDAQ advancing 0.07. So maybe it's time to just come out here and explain what's happening. Because this action is so different from the stock market we've had for the last 12 years, it's worth discussing what's really going on underneath. So we got a genuine, honest to goodness, bona fide bull market happening. But I think most people either don't recognize this market for what it is, because they've never really seen a bull, or they're too skeptical, and they could be staring one right in the face, or they just forgot what a real bull market looks like because it's been so long since we'd have one. Okay, look, I'm old enough to have seen all kinds of markets. I lived through the 1980s and 1990s. Those were legitimate bull moves, rallies that were broad-based and gave us fantastic, fantastic returns, not snapback craziness and vicious whipsaw moves, the fake out and the buying high, selling low. Understand. I'm not saying everything's right in this market. Just today, the transports failed to go higher. Well, the Dow climbed. I don't like that. Copper dropped today, the JJC. I've been saying I need that to go higher. Things aren't perfect by any means. What I am saying is this tape, meaning the day-to-day -day action, does have a lot in common with those bull markets of old. Let me give you the anatomy of a bull so you know exactly what I'm looking at on a daily today. First, bull markets are built on a robust foundation of skepticism and disbelief. Every great bull market I've seen has been scorned and scoffed at. With many people so sure it's not for real, they stay away, hide in other asset classes until it's too late, like treasuries. More on that later. What's the best way to gauge disbelief? How about the fact that lately the volume is shockingly low? Lots of days kind of feel like holidays. The participation in this market seems almost nil. Got to search far and wide for anyone who's actually willing to say, I like this market. Everybody has one foot out the door or no feet in at all. In fact, I hear more about a bubble in stocks than a bull market in stocks. Trust me, hell hath no fury like a bull market scorned. And it's going to gore and trample all the skeptical short sellers. Second characteristic, stocks are acting rationally when they report. This morning, we had two excellent quarters, one for Coca-Cola, other from Yum Brands, KFC, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell. <coughs> Excuse me. Both rallied after they reported. Before you say, well, of course they rallied, I want you to consider that last year, stocks rarely did what they were supposed to do. If the S&P 500 was down on the day they reported, these stocks went down with it, regardless of how good the reports were. If they couldn't buck the tide, nothing could buck the tide. Or on other occasions, we'd find fault in some line, focus solely on that. Inflation line at Yum was elevated. North American beverage line at Coke, nothing to write home about. But in this market, we take good news at face value. Third, in other markets, stocks that disappoint, they go down and they stay down. <laughs> Not in this market. Classic sign we got a bull on our hands. Disappointers, they tend to go down, then wait a little, then spring back up. And we struggle to remember what was rolling. Hey, think about it. Uh, Goldman Sachs missed horribly, upper right hand corner of the uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, the New York Times, everything. Yet the stock's up more than 20 points since then. Alcoa, I mean, a hideous quarter, it's up about 20%. Travelers ATT, miserable, right? Back to where they were or above. Ford, eat insane. Consider the most egregious supposed miss, Chipotle. Stocks got slugged for 10 point when the earnings disappointed, right? It just got crushed. Upon closer review, I mean, because, you know, we threw the flag. Not, a, ooh, not unlike Belichick. Oop, he threw it wrong, never mind. You had to admit it was a super quarter. The bears were stuffed into burritos with a little salsa in the eyes. <laughs> anyway, the stock's now back in its permanent residence on the new high list. Bull markets actually let you in. Bear markets suck you in. Today's a perfect example. Another day in a delectable pattern where the market opens down off, uh, well, uh, what was a Oh, Greece, yeah, you're right, I forgot. Unlike 2011, where that was fair warning of the slaughter ahead, 2012, another buying opportunity to get in a better price. Last year, if you bought low, you ended up down lower almost immediately. This year, when you buy low, you actually get a good price. Fourth, just like in the great bull markets in the 80s, 
Stocks tend to overrun well-worn levels of resistance. You know, you hit them up. You haven't seen them in a while, like you've been like on a desert island or something. You're like, holy cow, I can't believe that stock's where it is. I hit up Microsoft. Sure enough. It's, I, I busted through what I thought was the impermeable $30 ceiling. Intel, above 25. Did you see McDonald's? Burst through a par, 100. Market Express, no longer bound by 50. Walmart's cleared 60 at last. These have been containment levels forever. No longer. Fifth, the good stocks, they don't seem to quit. Unlike last year when we figured at a certain point stocks would just have to give it up like uh, shoots and ladders, you know, sliding all the way back down to where they started. We got stocks that just seemed uh, willed, even destined to go higher. It seemed like almost every like, day. This is one of those tapes where Apple seems to go up a little bit. Every day. Starbucks. Home Depot. Well-known big capitalization names that just tack one point after point. Finally, this market is not zero sum. The problem with almost all the rallies since the turn of the millennium is they've been narrow. Almost the entire run in the middle of the last decade was in pure commodity stocks. China plays. Soft goods and financials, they sat it out. Tech couldn't get out of its own way. Now consider a day like today. Tech stocks rallied nicely across the board, but so did the financials. The retailers tore up, tore up the joint, but so did the gold stocks. The oil zoomed, but so did the best of pharma. Ag stocks worked higher, but so did the consumers of the ag complex, the restaurants. You need to recognize how amazing it is. We haven't been able to sustain a rally that brought since the 1990s, a move where the money didn't come out of Peter's portfolio to pay for Paul's. Yet that's exactly what happened uh, in, in the 1980s. We saw the same problem, the same thing. After a multi-decade bear market, suddenly we had money everywhere, everywhere to buy every different kind of stock. And one stock didn't go up and the other one go down because of it. So, okay, here, call it a bubble, all right? Call it a light volume short squeeze. I don't care. I diss it as an aberrant whistle past the Greek graveyard. Discount it as some weird bounce off of year-end lows. Say whatever you want. But my eyes tell me this one looks like the bull market has brought us out of the Dow 1000 and then Dow 3500 in the 80s and the 90s, respectively. Sure, the Dow spiked higher in the last decade, but that turned out to be a totally unsustainable run. This one, maybe, just maybe, it has the makings of those incredibly bullish markets of yore that made people believe stocks were a good place to save and invest, not just to lose in rent. And yes, ultimately, scorn. Let's go to Dave in Ohio, please. Dave. Hello, Jim. What's up, I'm Dave? I'm retired, and I'm very concerned about the increasing tensions between Iran and Israel and the potential for military conflict, higher oil prices, and an economic downturn. Should I move out of equities and, and into short-term bonds? Okay, the two worry you have just hit on the two worries articulated this morning on uh, my other show, Squawk on the Street. I'm worried about Iran, Iran and a war with, with Israel. And I'm worried that uh, gasoline's going above $4. Uh, these are uh, worries that other people have. If one of them happens, the market will get hit. Uh, you can raise some cash because of it, because those are the two worries. But remember, they will indeed, even them, perhaps be buying opportunities in the end. Is this a bear market in a bull market's clothing? I think so. Call it what you want. But I, I, I got to side with the bulls. May have money. Be right back.